Hello, I'm back with another episode. Today's episode focuses on early birds and night owls. And the scientific term for that is sleep chronotype. Uh, the population of humans, they range along a normal distribution in regards to what sleep chronotype they have. It, it, from what I've read, it seems like 30% of the population has uh, early morning chronotype or morningness chronotype or early bird chronotype, any of those. And around 40% or the, the majority of people the, have a chronotype that's kind of in the center and then the other 30% are night owls or have an evening type chronotype. And this is genetically predetermined when you're born based off of the traits that your parents and their parents and their parents had. And it almost makes sense if you think about it through a hunter-gatherer perspective. Looking back during that time, when, peop when some people were asleep at night, some people were awake guarding the fort and making sure that the people who were asleep were not going to get attacked by animals or other threats. And so if you're a person who might like to stay up later, there is a chance that some of your ancestors were people who stayed up later and guarded the fort while it was evening time. And But there, there's a ton of factors that play into this chronotype. It's not just biological. It's also environmental. What kind of surroundings have you put yourself in? At night, do you keep a lot of lights on? And do you have blackout curtains? And have you kind of tailored your environment to staying up later? and not waking up early or waking up later. Personally, I'm a person who likes to stay up a bit later. I actually become energized once 6, 7, 8, 9 o'clock p.m. rolls around and I am just in the mood to get things done. I'm in the mood to be productive. I'm in the mood to talk with people. I become energized socially and I can't tell if that's because of my genetic predisposition or if it's because of the environment that I've tailored for myself. But there is science to explain that each person has a biological clock inside of them that kind of determines that when the best time to go to bed and best time to wake up is. Let's say you're an early bird and you, if you're an early bird uh, a typical bedtime is maybe 8, 9, or 10 p.m. within that range. And a typical wake-up time would be 4, 5, or 6 a.m. Let's say that's your biological chronotype that you've been kind of given at birth, but you typically go to sleep at midnight or 1 and wake up at 8 or 9. And you, you might think, well, Harley, they're still getting their proper 8 hours of sleep. And you might be right in saying that eight hours of sleep is crucial, and it is, and there's a ton of science to support that. But what actually occurs is if you have an early morning chronotype, you might actually be missing out on parts of your sleep. You might be getting that eight hours, but your quality of sleep is lower. And so when you're sleeping, you're going through 90-minute cycles of deep sleep and REM sleep and in that first half of the night the majority of those cycles are deep sleep and towards the other half of the later half of the night the majority of those cycles are REM sleep and both of those aspects of sleep are very important I don't fully understand what why each is so important I need to do more research but in the slight bit of research I've done you do have that phase where you start do in lots of deep sleep and then later on into the night or early morning you're getting a lot of REM sleep and a person who has a biological chronotype of early morning type that deep sleep might you might be built so that your deep sleep starts at 8 9 or 10 p.m. and goes till maybe 1 or 2 a.m. and then you start getting your REM sleep at around 2 or 3 or 4 a.m. and whereas a person who's 
built like a night owl, they might not get that that need to get into deep sleep till maybe one or two a.m. and their REM sleep cycle might not even occur until five, six, or seven a.m. Meaning that there's a pretty large disparity regarding when your biological needs are telling you that you should get sleep and there's a lot of people who are night owls who get an early job who st that starts at 7 or 8 a.m. and they have to get up pretty early but they're built to wake up at 8 or 9 a.m. meaning that they might be sacrificing some of that REM sleep in the morning versus a person who is built like an early bird and who stays up later because of their situation they might be sacrificing some deep sleep because their deep sleep they, they their appetite for deep sleep might be at 10 p.m. instead and they're already still awake at midnight so it's hard to necessarily tell what chronotype you are I hear that you can go to a sleep doctor and they can diagnose you and you can kind of diagnose yourself but it can be very very subjective like I just said I've kinda of tailored my environment to be like a night owl what if I am an early bird and I've tailored my environment to be like a night owl and I'm sacrificing a ton of deep sleep from what I can tell though I do get energized once evening rolls around and it does take me a little bit in the morning to even become fully awake normally in the morning I'm like wow I'm not I'm not myself yet I need a, like an hour or two to fully wake up and and some people like early birds once evening rolls around they're like man I'm getting tired I just want to get to bed or they might fall asleep on the couch before they even get to bed or whatever and and in the morning they are just they got a burst of energy and they're ready to go but and it shows that early birds have this they have a early they have a huge burst of energy in the morning but then their energy kind of dwindles off at a pretty quick pace throughout the day whereas a, a night owl they might not have that much energy in the beginning but then it starts to increase and there's a peak time in which maybe later in the afternoon and then it's a slow drop off for night owls like a slow drop off in energy meaning that there's pros and cons to being early bird or night owl and we're focusing mainly on the extremes right now. Like I said, 40% of the population has a rest kind of in the center in between those extremes. So I just found this incredibly interesting. The reason I started talking about all this is because my girlfriend, she she's more of an early bird and I'm more of a night owl. And sometimes it can be hard to negotiate like, oh, or it can just be hard to navigate because I might be up five, six hours later than she is and and waking up five, six hours later. Meaning we may not have as many hours that we're sharing together. But in my opinion, I don't see that as too much of a con because it allows me to be productive in the evening when she goes to bed and it allows her to be productive in the morning when I'm still asleep. Meaning there's no distractions. And so I, I did some more research and it shows that couples who have one person an early bird and the other person a night owl it can be pretty useful for taking care of kids when some kids like to or babies they might be awake in the night well that's the night owls responsibility and oh if the babies awake in the early morning that's the early birds responsibility and it kinda it allows you to trade off that responsibility versus if two people were early birds and they like to get to bed right at 8 or 9 a.m. or p.m and the baby's awake at like 11.30 crying, guess what? They both, both of those people are going to have to sacrifice their time in which they are, they have an appetite for deep sleep. And, and same with two people that are, you know, night owls and the baby's awake at 5 a.m. Both of those people are in, have an appetite for REM sleep and they need, but the baby needs attention. So I was just looking into all kinds of different people just reading online people's experiences with their different chronotypes and their relationship and their kids and it's just truly it's truly interesting but there let's say you you get a job and you're a night owl and you're like man I gotta get start getting to bed early and start waking up early and you might say 
that it, you don't want to, but that's reality. You might have to. And some good methods to kind of shift your bedtime forward from what I've heard from Andrew Huberman. I might link this video. He was saying that if you if you turn off all the lights maybe an hour or two before bed, probably an hour at least, and you open up your curtains so that in the morning you're gonna you're gonna get that natural light hitting your eyes. If you can do both of those things and not and eat at least don't eat an hour before bedtime, you're gonna get in that your brain is gonna start thinking, oh man, it's time for bed. I the lights are off, I I haven't eaten, I'm and if in the morning you kinda shock yourself with that light exposure, you're gonna wake up a little bit easier in the morning. But I also have re heard from Matthew Walker that if you attempt to deviate from your your chronotype, uh, if you attempt to deviate from the clock that's kind of built into your your brain, there's a lot of health consequences that can occur, such as the chance for increased uh, heart problems later on in life, the risk of higher blood glucose or blood sugar levels which can lead to diabetes and obesity and it can also lead to shortened telomeres which is a uh, it's part of your DNA I don't even fully understand it and see like this is this is me kinda just doing some research and I have the basic information if you want to get the in-depth analysis I've linked some things in the description that really kind of explain the the science and the studies behind what I'm talking about. I've been criticized by some people to say, Harley, you're just kind of listing off some facts. Do you even know if they're true? Where are you getting this information? So I've decided to list some things in the description so that you can go and search out and make your own opinion based off of that knowledge. But my goal here is to just talk about things that I feel like are important and that have been useful to me to know. And so if you like learning about what I'm saying and if you if you like this more basic approach, still getting into depth, but I'm no scientist, I'm just a curious person. So that's kind of the structure of my podcast. But I Matthew Walker was explaining it in this video that I'll link that Sometimes night owls will they'll attempt to go to sleep at a at a early bedtime and they might lay awake at night unable to sleep no matter if they turned off their lights or if they if they read a book like a like a paper book not an electronic device and they still can't get to sleep and what he was saying is it's probably healthier for you to stay up during that period and be productive because night owls have this propensity to be more happy have high levels of creativity and in that period of evening. So like with me with this podcast, I tend to get quite creative once the evening hours roll around. In the morning, my mind is kind of dull and I just, I'm not thinking, I'm, I'm not becoming creative or I, I just am not who I like in the morning. I, I enjoy myself more in the evening and I think my work quality is better once it's later in the day and so my goal isn't to tr deviate from this night owl schedule but I also feel like maybe testing out going to bed at different times and seeing how they feel trying to get that eight hours within each of those time zones and then seeing over a few days or weeks what feels better where how which time early which which bedtime and wake time feels the best? In which of those ranges do you feel the most rested, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And that's the experiment I'm going to lay out. But I just thought that talking about these chronotypes to get people interested would be an interesting topic. And one other thing is that teenagers, they have a... Their biological clock is typically shifted later. Pretty much most teenagers... I, from what I've read and but it, the annoying thing is is that school start time is so early in the morning and and Matthew Walker says in his book why we sleep that he fe he feels that and he has science to back it up that if school start times were shifted back two three hours he feels as if car crashes would decrease grades would increase 
SAT scores would increase, and just overall health of students would increase. And because of teenagers and adolescents uh, shifting later of their biological clock, they don't want to go to bed at 10 or 11 p.m. They probably want to go to bed at 1 or 2 a.m. And that's what's most healthy for them. But school and society and, and this early bird gets the worm mentality has been pushed so heavily that high schoolers truly get the short end of the stick. I was a person who I couldn't even get to bed at midnight. It was just impossible for me in high school. I, I would stay up late and sacrifice sleep knowing that it wasn't healthy for me, but I couldn't sleep. I was awake at night, unable to sleep, so I might as well do something else instead of just sitting here trying to sleep. So, I don't know. Give me your thoughts. I've also listed this uh, chronotype test. It's like the morning or eveningness test. It kind of ranges you along the spectrum of, of morning type and evening type and in the middle. And, you know, this is quite subjective. You're, you're pretty biased in what you think about yourself. And it, it might, taking the test might confirm your bias, but it might actually be pretty useful for you to think about. And, and it would be maybe useful for you to maybe think about shifting your bedtime later or earlier just to see how restful do you feel afterwards. And so this was just my little talk on the sleep chronotypes. I had no idea that it was biologically wired. I thought it was just based off your environment that you kind of tailored for yourself. But it was, it was truly interesting to hear about how your ancestors passed down these traits. And there's almost nothing you can do about changing it. There are some things, but like I said, deviating from that can, be, can have a lot of consequences that are negative. But sometimes that's the sacrifices people make to keep a job or you know or be social so I guess this is my these are my thoughts and some of my research that I've done on the chronotypes and I hope you enjoyed it let me know what your results are for this morning eveningness test because I'm curious to know and thank you so much thanks so much for listening to the Harley Sealbinder podcast I hope you enjoyed this one Let's keep making the world a better place, one deep, important conversation at a time. Have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.